Hello, friend. Well, of late, you know, we've brought some critical topic podcasts, CarmCasts, and Town Hall Academies to you that will help you as you navigate the myriad of pathways you can take in dealing with the challenges from the pandemic. This episode, it's about technician job opportunities from both sides of the industry, both the owner and the tech. I'm with founder and CEO Eli Masabki from MechanicsMarketplace.com talking about placements, planning, preparing, and replacing techs you may have lost from the COVID-19 pandemic. We are focusing more on being ahead of the curve and understanding your needs in finding talent for your shop. You're going to lose this candidate. And I've seen many of these great candidates, great employers, great first interviews, but poof, candidates are gone. If you're new to the podcast, welcome. You should know we produce another great and important resource, the original single subject forum, the Town Hall Academy. We air it live every Friday on Facebook at noon, and it's repurposed as a podcast every Thursday. Now, as of this moment, 171 Town Hall episodes, a fantastic resource for everything aftermarket and for you, the perpetual student. Hey, good day, Carm Capriato, the aftermarket podcast guy. I don't know if you know this, but I'm very meticulous and disciplined in my ways of handling and creating content. Have you noticed? Now, I value excellence and creativity and strive for innovation. Covering almost 360 degrees of the automotive aftermarket consistently, helping you develop and take your business savvy to the next level. You know, life as we know it will have a new normal, but the key to staying ahead will be joining your community at Apex 2020 to reconnect. Hey, we're in it together, and together we'll move ahead. The dates for Apex 2020, November 3rd through the 5th. Please get into that calendar, write that down. It'll be at the Sands Expo and Caesars Forum Conference Center in Las Vegas. This will be a perfect time to reconnect. A homecoming. Register now at aapexshow.com. And welcome new support partner to Remarkable Results Radio, Shopware. Now, if you haven't thought about your management software this year, it's time. I'm sure you've got some time on your hands or you're planning for tomorrow. Now, Shopware Shop Management is transforming the way shops like yours do business by giving you the tools to increase your sales while delighting your customers. Go to GetShopware.com. That's GetShopware.com for all the details. In this episode, I'm with Eli Masabki, founder and CEO of Mechanics Marketplace. Eli and I are talking about help with placement, career advice, and resumes. We get into average hire time, making an offer, and the pressure of finding new talent because master diagnosticians are scarce. And the technician average age is putting pressure of retirement on the industry. Find the talking points from Eli Masabki that will make for a great meeting agenda at remarkableresults.biz slash E536. Hey, I'm sure you'll be delighted once you're done with the episode. No doubt you'll listen to learn just one thing. And if you're a tech looking for a job or a shop owner who is always recruiting, this episode is for you. Keep in mind the pressure of the pandemic and let's beat the curve on keeping your technician staff whole. Hey, a warm welcome to Eli Masabki. Hey, man, how you doing? Very well. How are you? I'm great, Eli. Uh, Mechanics Marketplace is your company. And boy, I can't wait to talk about this because, you know, obviously we're in, in, in absolutely the center of the, the pandemic and there's so many issues going on. But you put technicians and shop owners together and shop owners and technicians together. And you've got this really fascinating thing I want to talk about. Uh, it, it, has, it may have something to do with the gig economy and, you know, temporary placement. You know, I love everything that you're doing in the business, but I think we need to stop and, and realize one thing. We've talked about it on the podcast before, how long it takes to replace a tech and what the lost revenues could be because you don't have one. And And in this particular time that we have, where there may be some people available, and we may have people that just don't want to come back. How are you looking at things, Eli? Right now, it's very dynamic. Uh, it's changing uh, every day. It varies by location. So we have some parts of the country where business is as usual, uh, and we have other places that are heavily impacted. So we try to deal with each business and each technician, every automotive professional, you know, depending on their environment, depending on the circumstances that they have to deal with. So if you looked at before the pandemic, the average time to find a good quality technician was about three and a half months. Uh, that's the way it was before. 
Now, what we have seen in the past couple of months is there was some layoffs. Uh, they were not as big as I expected. They were more in the range of 10 to 15%. But there were about 70% that uh, got impacted, which means they had uh, to work fewer hours or they had to work fewer days, but their income got impacted. Wait a minute, 70% of the industry? Correct, okay. the auto repair industry. And we surveyed over 2,000 technicians throughout the past couple of months. So a lot of people got impacted. In the past couple of weeks, things have started to change a little bit. As the businesses started to collect their PPP money, uh, which is, as you know, the, the assistance that's coming from, from the government, some employers started to open their doors and some are being smart and they're realizing, okay, well, things are going to change here soon. I have a little bit more money. I better get ahead of the curve a little bit and start looking again. Start looking again. It's because they were shorthanded before the pandemic? They were shorthanded before the pandemic. Okay, now they want to start getting back in it. And, and, and like you're saying, now is probably the perfect time. Yes, and also some businesses took the opportunity to upgrade their skill sets. So they had some technicians that were not probably up to par what they wanted them to be. And they took this opportunity to say, okay, we're going to let you go. Uh, and now they're starting from scratch and saying, hey, I want to go back and replace these people. So we're seeing some of that going on as well. Your business, Mechanics Marketplace, would you help a technician build a resume and get it up and get it out there? And at the same time, will you actually take a, a shop and say, hey, um, we've got some people that we can hook, hook you up with? Absolutely. I mean, for us, ideally, it's about having a perfect match. Uh, it doesn't, it's not about trying to help a shop find a technician and we're done, goodbye. Uh, we want to make sure it's the right person with the right skills. And we want to find some of these uh, technicians are not very good at writing resumes. Uh, they may have some skills they don't know how to articulate. So we help them. We basically, on our website, we say, hey, contact us. We'll help you review your resume, uh, help you with career advice to understand what you're looking for. You know, we had some, you know, some technicians come to us and say, well, I'm making $150,000 a year. And I'm looking for, you know, my next opportunity. And I told the guy, hey, you know, you're at the very top of, of the, the ladder here. I think you're in the top 1%, if not half percent of the industry. So you're not going to find another job that's going to give you more money. And so long story short, he realized that, you know, he needed something different. And what he did, he had some savings and he went and opened his own shop which was fantastic. Actually, you know, he turned out to be one of our customers too. So we, he came back to us and we helped him hire technicians. But we gauge where people are at and, and kind of advise, hey, here's where you are and here are some of the things you need to do. You have some people that say, hey, I'm not making enough money. And we look at their profiles like, you know, go get your ASC certifications. Uh, that's going to help your career tremendously. And, you know, there are two sides. People say, oh, it's just a piece of paper. It doesn't mean you're a good technician because you have ASC certifications. But I don't believe that. The ASC certification is part of your career growth. It's part of your education. And it helps you. You're not going to learn everything out of it. But it says, I am certified. And I know something. I've taken a test that other people haven't taken. Uh, and it goes along with their experiences. Just like if you look at other uh, analogy, if you look at engineers, electrical engineers, civil engineers, mechanical engineers, they go, they get a four-year college degree. They come out of school. They don't know anything. They don't learn until they go gain experience. But what they learn, it gi gives them the foundation uh, for their career growth, for moving up, learning new skills, staying up to date with the latest technologies. And that's what these certifications give you. Great analogy. Thank you for that, because we, we forget uh, that uh, we broke a lot of things uh, to get <laughs> to get wisdom. We sure did. Um, temporary help. You and I, you know, in our pre-call talked about, you know, people, maybe even shops considering stopgap measures. The reason we came up with a temporary placement is because we looked at the industry and we're looking at 
more than half of the technicians are over the age of 50. And these technicians are retiring. Uh, and in the next 20 years, essentially, we're going to lose half of these very experienced technicians. Now, sadly, a lot of these technicians are retiring, but unfortunately, they're not making a lot of money yet. You know, they still, they retire. So, okay, this is my social security check. You know, I need to live. I need to do something else. And I'm also want to get busy. So uh, they cannot stay and do the physical work that a technician job requires 40, 50 hours a week. But they want the income. They want to be busy. Uh, they like to they love to work on cards and they have amazing skills. So this is why we created the app. Say, hey, all these people that want to come back and work and help out other shops, here's a way for you to find a job and connect quickly with uh, with shops. I see in 10 years, we're going to have so many opportunities to hire, um, maybe not temporary, but part-time people to to cover, you know, some of the big biggest times of the day or or experience growth as as we're going to um, we're going to add, add more branches. Why not uh, staff a place with a with a part time legacy guy or lady? That's right. That's right. And and believe I mean if you look at the industry, it goes up and down. Right. It's very seasonal. There are some times where shop even you know forget about the pandemic now, but go back in normal times. There are some months that are extremely busy. Summer times are usually very busy. When it comes to the holidays, sometimes it, it's a hit and miss. Sometimes they're slow. Sometimes they're a little bit busy. So it's a very seasonal business. So demand varies. And it's good to have the ability to hire someone to bring in on board very quickly to help out when the business is booming uh, and not have to retain this person uh, for the, as a permanent employee when things are slow. So it addresses some of the things that flat rate really tries to do but does a very poor job at because it, it's really created a lot of disgruntled employees. Hey, this year Apex will be more of an aftermarket homecoming celebration than ever before. Not only will it have all kinds of exciting new things waiting for you, but most importantly, Apex 2020 will be where industry colleagues, friends, and family reunite after this time apart, and together it will drive the industry forward. I know I'm looking forward to it more than I ever have because... I get to see all of you. Until we get there, keep yourselves and your families and your businesses healthy and safe. Now, there's no place like home, and we can't wait to welcome you home in November at Apex 2020. The power of being there, November 3rd through the 5th at the Sands Expo and Caesars Forum Conference Center in Las Vegas. Register now at aapexshow.com. Hey, Carm here, and I bet you think of your shop management system every day and wonder if it's time to make an important change, a change to a modern, efficient, and powerful system. Now, instead of thinking about your old system, I want you to consider Shopware, a comprehensive cloud-powered shop management system that gives your customers an end-to-end digital experience that will help you sell more services while making your customers happier. And who doesn't want happier customers? In a study of work orders written and shared on Shopware, sharing the digital work order with your customer generated a 12% increase in their likelihood to buy. Now, that translates to additional sales in your business. And with Shopware's proprietary parts GP optimizer, you can boost your parts margin with the click of a button and leave behind the pain of managing an old parts matrix. Put solid gross margin dollars back in your business because Shopware puts huge computing power into making you successful. Now it's time. Make the switch to Shopware. Get a free live demonstration at shop-ware.com and find out how you can make more money from happier customers. I mentioned the word gig economy a little while ago. Do you ever see technicians, you know, contracting themselves out? Well, if you think of mobile mechanics, that's what they are. Yeah, you're right. So mobile mechanics get calls, they go fix a car, and off to the next one. But that's specifically their business, you know. Uh, but uh, well, I guess if it was the gig economy, I have I've started my own company, and I'm and I'm for hire. Okay, I get it. Do you see the gig economy or like a mobile tech just dri- driving out and, and hanging out at the shop for the whole day? So look at it from the mobile mechanics uh, perspective. Now there are some that are very successful; they're busy all the time; they don't need anything else. The ones that are trying to get into the industry or have been at it for just a few years, they realize that their schedule is now booked 
all, all year long. So they have some gaps. Now, granted, some people say, hey, after the day, I have no, no appointments today. I'm just going to go relax and chill, watch TV or whatever. Uh, but there are some that are more ambitious. They want to make more money. They want to stay busy. So this gives them an opportunity to fill their schedule during these days. So you have mobile mechanics. You have retiring uh, technicians. And then you have people in between jobs, uh, which... You know, people lose their jobs for whatever reason. They work at a dealership. The dealership shuts down. They're off a job all of a sudden. And then now they're looking for the next gig. Um, you know, some of them get a job immediately. Some take them some time. And actually, I encourage the technicians to take their time because often what I see is technicians take a job. Uh, they don't like it. Uh, there's no fit, no chemistry, whatever. And they jump to the next one. And then the next one. And what happens, that basically kills their career. Eventually, there's this big opportunity with the best shop, with the best benefits, best career growth. And they look at their resume and say, this is a job hopper. I'm not even going to talk to him. And they basically kill their career by doing that. Got it. I'm a shop owner. I'm, I'm looking to hire. I need someone. It's time. Am I looking at a... I think we, we talked about it earlier, th- three and a half months to replace someone. Is there enough... Um, opportunity out there. What does it take for me to get an interview, to, to get a resume, to get an interview and to respond? If there's action from resumes, what's the timeline? What should I be looking at to, to make a hire? Right now, things are different. There are a lot of people that are in the market. There are people that are looking. There are people that are displaced. There are people that are not happy where they're at because they're not making enough money. So there's a bigger pool of people. Now, if you're looking for that master tech or superstar ATAG diagnostician, you know, European specialist or truck specialist, these guys are still extremely scarce uh, because the smart employers, business owners, have done a very good job at protecting these people to make sure they don't go anyplace. I like that word, by the way, protecting. That, to me, says it all right there. Yeah, it, and, and I tell all my, all my customers, I said... A strong defense is better than than your offense. You have to make sure you keep the people that you have and retain these people. Uh, don't lose them. We talk a lot of shop owners and a lot of them think they know it all, but unfortunately, they are not very, I mean, they're good, technically extremely strong. They understand the business, but they're not very good with the people. They don't know how to retain the people, how to so that's another aspect that we try to go. We go and talk to a lot of shop owners about retaining their talent. Do you have any advice? I, I've just uh, d- spent a day doing some interviews. Uh, I interviewed three, three potential candidates. Uh, it, it, do I just sit on it and, you know, just think about it? For, or do I need to have a discipline of action? You don't want to rush in hiring. You want to take your time. You want to have multiple people interview uh, you want to make sure it's an important decision to bring an important person to your team. Uh, but that's common knowledge. But when it comes to the automotive industry, unfortunately, you, d- you cannot afford this luxury. The technicians, I found, make very quick decisions. They don't think through, well, do I go work? Is this the employer I want to go work for or this other employer? They're not that selective, which is, which is not good for their careers. And this is how they make the mistakes. They go some places and they're unhappy and then they go someplace else and they keep on changing jobs. They have to be more careful and think through the process and see where they want to go work. But unfortunately, that's not what happens. So what we try to do is we, we move very fast because these decisions happen very quickly. Let's take the scenario you have a technician. Okay? They decide they want to change jobs. They get on the job boards. And it's very easy to go apply for four or five jobs at the same time. Well, within a few hours, they have multiple shop owners contacting them and scheduling interviews. So they go down the next day. They have four interviews lined up. They go to the first one. They go to the second one. They don't show up to the third or the fourth. Boom. The second shop gave them an offer on the spot. They liked it. They accepted it. And That was the way the industry unfortunately works. So it happens, decisions happen very quickly. And so the shop owners, I tell them, again, before this pandemic, I was telling them, if you like the candidate, 
you got to move very quickly. you got to make them a, a, an offer. You cannot wait and bring in your coach to interview them and, and, now, and your coach is not available for until the next week. You're going to lose this candidate. And I've seen many of these great candidates, great employers, great first interviews, but poof, candidates are gone. Thank you for bringing this up. We've done shows on ghosting and, you know, the old buyer's remorse here. Like you said, I've got four interviews. I went to two. I got an offer from one. I took it. And then I started to think about, oh, well, mm, I went to the third in between the two weeks notice and I never show up for the one that I accepted. I didn't mean to, to make a jest of it because it's a terrible thing. Back when I owned businesses and people didn't show up, we called it ghosting. I dumped on myself so badly. What did I do wrong? What did I do wrong? You got any advice on ghosting? What I tell everyone, you have to move very fast. And this is what we try to do. It's like, people, why should we hire an external recruiter? It's because we're monitoring the candidates. We're reaching out to the candidates as soon as they apply. We try to get you there first. We want to make sure you're the first person to go and interview with. And hopefully you like them, they like you, and you can move quickly and make them an offer. Because guess what? the second or the third or fourth person they meet is going to give them an offer because that's how good this, this technician is. Now, granted, some of them are maybe middle of the road and maybe they, you know, it's not easy to make a decision. And I, we don't force it, uh, our customers to make decisions quickly. But see, if you do find this right person, you have to move quickly. So, yes, the advice is try to get to them as quickly as possible, uh, respond to them. And I know it's very tough for a business owner because – they're, you know, they're busy. They're not monitoring their emails all day. Uh, they probably check up early in the morning and then they're busy all day with their business. And then towards the end of the day, they, they check their emails again. Well, guess what? Five, six, eight hours have passed. This candidate has been approached by uh, other employers, by other recruiters, and now they're on a different path and you, you, you've lost them. So it's, it's speed of action is what we tell everyone. Mechanics Marketplace. Uh, where'd you come up with this idea? The vision for the company is to build a vertical marketplace for the automotive industry. So what, you know, we looked at what is going on. We looked at all these hundreds of Facebook groups, people going all over the place to hire from Craigslist and Facebook and Indeed and, you know, and, and so on and so forth. All these different places. And resources. Where do I find my resources? And then, you know, there's every vendor has their own technical data. So the idea is to take this fully fragmented market and consolidate it so people can go to one place and they can find the information they want. And I'm not saying replace what's uh, uh, everything out there, but link into it. So you have one point of entry and you know, you have competitors, whether, you know, if you say uh, I'm an all data guy or I'm a Mitchell One guy, well, th these are two separate platforms. They don't talk to one another, but you, you have employers that want to be able to reach uh, one as one platform or another. It's good to have a centralized place to go to all of these, uh, to go to research. There's a lot of free technical data available out there for the very small mom and pop shops that don't have the, you know, uh, right, they don't have subscriptions to shop management software or, or these database. There's a lot of information out there. You just got to find it. So we want to try to centralize all this stuff in one place. People go in and they reach out. Now, while we started this journey, we found this, we said, wait a minute, you're addressing a big problem, which is great. It's, love, it's great to do this. But the biggest fundamental problem in the industry right now it's talent. So we refocus our efforts and decide, okay, we're going we're gonna to focus on talent. Um, and we did the recruiting and we, do the, we build the app for temporary placement. And one thing that we're now we're working on is we notice, especially right now, people have a little bit more time and people are being more selective. Uh, they say, well, I want to try someone before I hire them. And because I'm not sure, which in a way it's smart because, you know, people make claims and you don't know until they really sit down and do the work. The try thing is this temporary stuff, right? Yeah. So ah. we're leveraging the temporary platform, but now we're saying try before you hire. So through the platform, they hire someone for a couple of days. They come in, they, they work, and if they like them, there's mutual interest, then they can, uh, uh, give them a permanent offer, and then there we go. 
Eli, is there a silver bullet for hiring? Uh, unfortunately, no. We're going through some uncertain times right now. And shop owners don't know when is the right time to hire. They don't want to be too late and miss out because once everyone starts to hire, all the towns are going to disappear and it's going to go back to the way it was six months ago. Yet if they hire too early and they don't have the business, then they're going to have to let them go or they're going to, the profits are going to suffer. So what I tell all my customers, what I advise all shop owners to do is prepare, plan, get ready. Because this thing is going to turn and you, want, you don't want to be the last one. Just like when you start a race, get set, ready, go. You want to get set, be ready, and go when this thing turns around. And you want to be ahead of the curve. You want to make sure you start looking. Uh, the time to start, I don't, it, it, it's going to depend by shop, uh, whether they've let go you know, some or part of their employees, or they still have some employees on board. So there's, the situation is going to change. It's going to be case by case basis. But every shop is going to need to get in the curve, look at what their needs are, and at least make sure they have the talent for the baseline. And now is a good time to replace talent. If they had some uh, employees that were subpar, now is a good time to to replace them and find some people that are better. And there are better people uh, on the market right now. That's what I would advise. Eli Misabki, thank you so much for being here. A lot of great wise words, man. Thanks. Yeah, it's been a pleasure. Thanks so much, Carl. Thanks for being on board to listen and learn from the premier automotive aftermarket podcast. Until next time. 